Perfect? Bang on my chest if you think I'm perfect. Go ahead, bang on it. No heart? You gotta have heart. Miles and miles of heart. This is Patchwork Heart Ministries Young Catholics Respond, brought to you by Breadbox Media. Now, here's your host, Bill Snyder. Thanks, Adam, and welcome to the program, everybody. This is Young Catholics Respond. I am Bill Snyder, and it is an absolute pleasure to have you listening to our podcast. No matter how you're listening to us, I'd like to welcome our newest audience from Living Bread Radio in Cleveland and Akron. Thank you so much for listening to the program, and we encourage you to reach out to our ministry at patchworkheart.org, not just the new listeners in Ohio, but anyone Reach out to us on our website, patchworkheart.org, or email us at info at patchworkheart.org to learn more about our ministry, and uh, follow us on all the fun social media out there, uh, Facebook, Twitter, we've got it, so feel free to follow us. We've got a really uh, fun and engaging ministry these days. We're getting ready to really launch out our Advent devotional, a contemplant of Las Posadas. So we're growing and expanding, and we want you to be a part of it. So join us on those many different ways. But the staple of our ministry really is Young Catholics Respond. Uh, it's our weekly radio show and podcast, and we really would like you to uh, listen to it and share it with a friend. So if you've uh, listened to this on Breadbox Media or you've heard it on the Apple Podcast app. Just share it with a friend and continue to help us grow our ministry. We really, really enjoy it, uh, and we believe that it's helping people out there. Today, uh, one of my friends, Kendra Von Esch, is on the program, and uh, she's no stranger to Young Catholics Respond, but uh, when I messaged her earlier this week and asked her uh, to come on the program, she said, man, I've got the best thing to talk about <laughs> on the program this week, all about deliverance. So Kendra, welcome back to the program. Uh, for those of you who don't know who she is, she's a speaker, a TV news anchor, and an author who has a passion to motivate others and deepen their relationship with God and the Catholic faith. So Kendra, welcome. Oh, thanks for having me, Bill. It's super exciting to be here. I can't wait to share what what amazing things have happened to me lately. Yeah, so you you got you have to tell me the you have a you know you just finished uh, speaking to 160 priests in the Rockford uh, our diocese in Illinois, and and you shared with them some pretty groundbreaking stuff because uh, your life was recently radically transformed again. No, oh, I'm telling you, God is working miracles in me. Praise be to God. Yes, it was. And I was wondering, oh my gosh, who does not know about deliverance and ways in which you can get those evil spirits out of your soul and free yourself? And I'm so happy to share it because it was a tool that I did not have in my toolbox on my six and a half year journey here since I came back to the faith. And I'm thinking, where in the world has this been my whole journey? <laughs> so I can't wait to share it with others and hopefully um, help them get free from some of the evil that's lurking around in our souls that we are maybe not even aware are there. Yeah. So so how did it happen for you that you became aware of this? Okay. This was a complete Holy Spirit moment. I was on my computer. It was in the morning right before I was ready to go to Mass. And a friend of mine from Houston had gone to this Unbound conference and came back and said it changed her life. And I just kind of was like, oh, yeah, that's great. I didn't even know what it was, didn't look it up. And then I want to say maybe three weeks after she got back, um, one morning she sent me an email with a picture of the front of the book and said, have you read this yet? And I you know, looked at it really fast and then boom, within 30 seconds, a woman that I'm faith coaching texted me the cover of the book, the same book within 30 seconds. And I was like, okay, Holy Spirit, I hear what you're saying. I will go ahead and read this. And I was super excited. I actually downloaded it on my phone that morning. And I said, okay, I'm, I'm hearing you. I'm going to go ahead and read it, meaning listen to it, because I'm very audible. I, I do a lot. I read a lot of books, quote unquote, audibly, not sitting down reading, just don't have the time. So guess what? I, I didn't read it. <laughs> I completely got busy with all this other stuff. And so unfortunately, I didn't listen to the Holy Spirit prompt me. 
and and I didn't end up reading the book or or playing the book until two weeks later. And you mentioned the 160 priests. So I'm at the Presbyter Day. I'm there to speak with them. This just happened this um, this Tuesday, September 10th. And I was freaking out about it, right? I'm praying a lot. I'm fasting. And I was being attacked like it was nobody's business. I was being woken up in the middle of the night. I could physically feel myself be shaken. And then all of these horrible thoughts would come into my head. Like, you're not good enough. You're not holy enough. Who do you think you are to be talking to all these priests? And constant barraging in in my head that I I wasn't sleeping all day long. I was panicked and freaked out. So I called my spiritual director and he said, Kendra, there is no question that you are being attacked. And I've been having these battles in my head and a lot of nasty thoughts throughout my ministry, especially when I first started, uh, which was last year last year, like in the, in 2018, coming out as a Catholic speaker, I left my executive career behind. And yeah, it was very scary because I didn't know how to do any of this stuff. I don't know how to, you know, write a book, design a book, publish a book, all these new things in my life. So for the beginning of my journey as a Catholic speaker, I just kept giving it up to God. God, I know I'm not supposed to be afraid. I know you have a plan. You're going to help me put people in my life. And I would get a little relief, but nothing like what happened when I started listening to this Unbound book by Neil Lozano. So here's the deal. I'm talking with my spiritual director and I ask him, because I'm not even sure this is like a Catholic book. Should I be following this? You know, like, is this really good for me to read? And he said, oh my gosh, yes. And you should apply all of those five keys and release yourself of these evil spirits and the attacks that are happening to you. So I was kind of scared. I'm like, oh my gosh, what is going on? And I was driving home from Iowa. This is two weeks later after that magical, hey, have you read this book from those two people happens to me. I'm driving back from Iowa to Chicago um, because I've got a lot of windshield time. And thank goodness the Holy Spirit put in my heart, hey, why don't you play the book? Start playing the book. I forgot that I downloaded it that day. So I turned it on and I just kept listening for a few hours. And then I continued to listen to the entire book. And it was a game changer. Um, You know, I, I, I could get into a whole bunch of stuff here, but I will say that there were three days of absolute craziness that I went through when these evil spirits were being delivered from my body. Maybe we should talk a little little bit about what deliverance is at the end of the day, because um, I shared that with the priests, my amazing experience by going through this process And some of the priests came up and said, I am so glad that you talked about that because I haven't really heard at the pulpit a lot about deliverance, evil spirits, the devil. You know, we're all aware of the spiritual warfare that life is, but I don't think we talk about it too much. And I just am so happy to share some of the tools and techniques that I learned just on the radio here today, but also point people to the Unbound book. And I know there's a bunch of different um, deliverance practices and ministries that are out there. You had mentioned one um, earlier. Who was it with the Campbells? Oh, yes. Uh, so uh, if people go back and listen to the podcast uh, in uh, for Joy and Patrick Campbell or Patrick and Campbell, Patrick and Joy Campbell, uh, they have a whole ministry um, in uh, deliverance ministry as well. And they actually work and travel the country with a Catholic priest as well. Um, but but yeah, I mean, the 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 unbound um, model, uh, which has existed for some time now is has proven itself um, really over and over and over again uh, and it's so great to hear that you've had a uh, amazing uh, transformation and deepening um, of that because uh, you know of, of your faith and then also uh, freedom freedom from um, you know s- slavery to uh, these these demons and these negative thoughts and you know um, 
we talk a lot about uh, being being oppressed, right? And it, it, it's oppression, uh, and and we see it all over the place, right? We just see uh, demons oppressing people uh, because they've cracked the door and let them in, right? I mean, that's that's the bottom line that we have opened the door and allowed um, for evil spirits. Uh, on a demonic level to oppress us, not necessarily possess us, but oppress us. Um, and, and, uh, you know, as, as you found out, um, you know, in your, in your journey, how beautiful, right? Like when you, when you say, I'm not going to allow you, when you take that stand and say, I'm not going to allow you to oppress me any further. Uh, I want you out. I want you, I want you gone, you know, in the name of Jesus Christ, I renounce this. I don't want this in my life. I don't want those uh, aspects in my life anymore. That's that's basically what um, you know. Deliverance deliverance is on that on that level, and it's it's not exorcism. It's not possession. It's just free freedom from oppression of evil spirits. Is that kind of what you experienced, Kendra? Uh, you know, as you as you went through this, that you weren't being as oppressed, even if you were being attacked. You weren't being as oppressed by um, Satan. Oh, my gosh, Bill, you have no idea. Yes, I was absolutely being oppressed. I am going to continue to be attacked. So while I freed myself from the spirits that were in in me because of the ways that I let them in, I know that they will continue to hound me from out and around me, um, kind of that spirit of harassment that continues to come in. But Yes, I absolutely found freedom from the five keys that are in this book. And again, it's Unbound by Neil Lozano. I don't know if I'm being, you know, challenged by God to go out and really speak of deliverance because I am changed with this kind of, I call it a weapon. I'm no longer fighting the gunfight with a knife, I feel like I have my gun completely loaded. And thank goodness, thank you, Holy Spirit. And thank you for these people that shared deliverance and how to get those that oppression out of your life. Absolutely. And we're going to talk about those five keys when we come back, Kendra, because uh, I, I truly believe, uh, you know, I know they helped you and I truly believe they've helped me and uh, many other people out there this model is truly a graced and uh and beautiful model to follow uh and it has awesome results so we're going to talk about it on the other side of this break here on young catholics respond i'm bill snyder my guest today kendra von esch right back after these messages saint therese of lesseau's little way of the cross written by victoria clarizo and designed by just love prince is a beautiful prayer booklet that helps you pray the stations of the cross Use these reflections to meditate on the great love and mercy that Jesus had for us as he journeyed to Calvary. The Little Way of the Cross includes gems from Scripture, the writings of St. Therese, and the words of Jesus from the imagination and prayer of the author. Go to JustLovePrince.com to get your copy today. Hi everybody, Bill Snyder here. Just want to thank you for listening to this episode of Young Catholics Respond. And as a founder of Patchwork Heart Ministry, we have so much more going on than just our podcasts. Check it out at patchworkheart.org. The words spoken by Our Lady of Guadalupe to Juan Diego nearly 500 years ago are almost too good to be true. Asking that a temple be built at the site of her apparition, she promised that here I will give all my love, my compassion, my help, and my protection to all those who love me, cry to me, seek me, and who have confidence in me. Here I will listen to their weepings and alleviate all their sufferings, necessities, and misfortunes. My name is Alan Napleton and I live in Dallas, Texas. I have visited her shrine in Mexico City dozens of times, bringing my own petitions and have found Our Lady to be true to her word. Over the years, I have brought hundreds of pilgrims to this holy place without incidents and have now founded Viva Guadalupe, a nonprofit that provides safe and inexpensive pilgrimages to Our Lady's shrine. If you would like to take our Blessed Mother up on her promise and learn more about how you can visit this special place of grace, please visit vivaguadalupe.org for more information. Your heart is always beating, but you never have to think about it. Welcome back to Young Catholics Respond. Once again, Bill Snyder. 
Welcome back to this episode of Young Catholics Respond, everybody. I'm Bill Snyder. Today, my guest is Kendra Von Esch. She is a TV anchor, a author, a speaker, uh, and she's talking with us today about uh, deliverance, deliverance in her own life, but deliverance through a very specific method, um, the Unbound Method, um, which is a book by uh, Neil Lozano. It's called Unbound. And uh, Kendra, this book, uh, kind of in the first half of the program, you kind of talked about how you stumbled into the book and all that. Um, but I, but I want to find out, you know, what are the specifics that really began to impact you and your life um, in this book? Okay, so there's five keys, and they are super simple. There's not, you know, it's not a a, a a workbook or a roadmap. So anyone that's listening, this is for anybody, any person. You don't, you know, it's not for someone who's manifested and possessed, as you said, but someone who, you know, wants to get evil spirits out of their life and all of the crazy ways that you open up the doors you learn about in this book that bring the spirits in. So you start off with step one, which is repentance and faith. And I'm telling you, I am so repentant. I go to confession every single week, not for mortal sins, but for me growing in virtue and in holiness because um, my pride sometimes gets in the way or I, you know, fall into the seven deadly sins and I constantly want to reconcile myself with God so that I can continue to grow in holiness and exercise virtuous living. And of course, I am completely believing in the Catholic Church and Jesus Christ and all the beautiful sacraments. I attend daily Mass because I need to have the Eucharist protect me. That's one of the blessings and wonderful things that happens when we receive the real blood, body, soul, and divinity in our bodies in the Eucharist. It protects us from mortal, mortal sins and from venial sins. So it's pretty important. I do not Look at Mass as an option. Mass is a requirement for me every single day. So it's not, it, will I go to Mass? It's when am I going to go to Mass to make that fit in my schedule for the day? So repentance and faith, it's important that you believe that Jesus Christ is our Savior. Second step is forgiveness. Now, this was the trippy part for me. I started thinking about forgiving people uh, a couple of years ago, I'll be honest with you, I heard, actually, maybe it was like four years ago, I heard on the radio, hey, if you don't forgive others, God won't forgive you. Freaked out because I needed reconciliation. I needed confession. I needed God's grace of forgiveness and his mercy. So at that time, I kept thinking, oh, but I, I really don't... I don't forgive these two or three people in my life. And one of them is my own brother, right? <laughs> Love your brethren. And literally, it's my brother that I can't stand for decades. And I tried to forgive on my own until I got on my knees one day in adoration. And I said, okay, Jesus, I can't do this on my own. Clearly, I need your help. And it took some time. But my heart of stone toward these people started turning into a heart of flesh. I started wanting good things for them. With my brother, I would hug him. I would say I love him. I would actually talk to him. I mean, today our relationship is a 180, and we'll text each other, I love you. We talk about how different our life is. He's still the same, but he's actually changing. So Jesus really worked amazing miracles in that way years ago. But this process in this book started thinking, I started thinking about, all the people I need to forgive. Like, I haven't thought of Susie tripping me in, in third grade and embarrassing me or, you know, Bobby calling me fat when I was 12 and all this stuff. But all of a sudden, I was thinking of stuff that I hadn't even thought of for decades that was just coming up in my head. So as I was thinking about forgiving this person, even like boys that didn't like me, I would forgive them because I was obviously holding something against them. It was a crazy three days, I will tell you. Um, but the minute I started forgiving them and saying it out loud, it kind of was an, one step to the freedom. And then the next, I say, two steps are kind of hand in hand. So you have the renunciation, basically saying like, I am so done with this. I'm taking my life back. No more fear. No more fear of rejection. You know, no, none of these like voices in my head anymore. I'm done. And then you combine it with the authority of 
Jesus, the Father in the name of Jesus Christ. So that's the deal. Jesus wins over Satan and all those little minions out there that are trying to oppress us and harass us because he absorbed all of our sins on the cross and conquered evil. So there's power in Jesus Christ. And I want to say that this book clearly says it's not us doing it ourselves. It's the power in the name of Jesus Christ and our faith in him being our savior that has the power. So the last piece, and oh, by the way, you would say it like this. I renounce in the name of Jesus Christ, the spirit of fear, the spirit of rejection, the spirit of whatever, right? Harassment, because that's what was happening to me. I was being absolutely bombarded by horrible negative voices. And then after that, and I'll you know share with you kind of what happened after that, um, those three days, then you ask, finally, why are free and all of the spirits get out of your body? You ask the Father to bless you. Please bring blessings into me empty. I am ready for you to come in and make me holy, sanctify me. Please, Father, bless me. And that's it. I mean, pretty simple, huh? Yeah, it's, it, it is a simple, uh, but it is challenging, right? I mean, it is, it, it is a challenge and it is emotional. And so, you know, what, what was the effect on you? Like, what was the effect on your um, soul after you did this? Oh my gosh. So I said it was a crazy three days stuff was coming into my head. I was waking up in the middle of the night. My brain was like, there was something just bouncing around in there, like a, like a pinball machine. Ding, 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 ding. All, all, all the time I would be thinking of this person to forgive, or I would renounce that spirit. I was so unsettled for three days that it was kind of overwhelming. I knew something was going on. I think they were just grabbing on to every part of my body, but I felt like I was cleaning the cobwebs out, like in the corners of the places that I never even looked in my soul. They were doing their best to hold on and stay in there. Um, but then when it came down to continuing to renounce day after day within these three days, there was one point on the third day that... I physically and spiritually and emotionally felt this weight. It was right in the center of my chest. And I felt heavy. It felt like there was weight there. It's hard to explain. But then I kept renouncing the spirit of fear. Fear is probably the biggest one that I battled. And I continue to say, I renounce in the name of Jesus Christ, the spirit of fear. And all of a sudden, my body started kind of moving and stirring and that weight just lifted up through my chest and out my shoulders. I felt something leave me. I felt so light and I started crying because <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, I literally felt that spirit get out of me. And then this warm, calm waterfall came on me and I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And and I then immediately asked God to fill me with blessings because I didn't want anything to happen, right? I, I was mentally thinking that, oh, hurry up, lock the doors, you know, lock them all so they don't come back in. But they come in different ways. And, you know, we have to be aware of that when you're playing little Ouija board games or back when I was a kid. I played light as a feather, stiff as a board with girls when we would have sleepovers. And we were conjuring up evil. We were inviting evil in through, you can do it through pornography. Nowadays, it's, you know, through Harry Potter books and things like the Long Island Media Chick with the big blonde hair that's on some of those channels and reading horoscopes and all of this stuff opens up those doors. So that's another benefit of the book because it opens your eyes to what you did to invite them in so you don't crack open those doors again. It's such an amazing process. And yes, I'm going to warn you, it's crazy. <laughs> you're going to feel some stuff and you're going to be thinking of some things that um, I just want to prepare you for. But boy, the freedom that you feel afterwards. And now I feel like I'm not in 
a knife fight or a gun fight with a knife, I now feel like, like I have a gun that's fully loaded. So I'm super happy to have this tool in my toolbox now because we are on a spiritual warfare journey here. Satan wants us in hell and Jesus wants us in heaven. So that's why I'm out here trying to get everyone to think about difference and yeah. have that as, as a weapon to fight the fight. Yeah, it is a beautiful weapon uh, and totally, uh, you know, has has helped you. I mean, I can just hear it in your voice how much it has helped you uh, over overcome uh, some of the some of the battles that you have faced in your in your life um, and and empowers you to 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 move forward in ministry and now, you know, go and help others and, and, and uh, empower them to release themselves of of this as well. Uh, so many people. Um, need to hear the message, and it's so great that you're able to do that. Uh, I want to uh, just quickly uh, ask you, Kendra, as time is kind of winding down here on uh, this episode, to talk with us a little about how people can engage with your ministry and and, and hear the message of deliverance firsthand from for, from you at parishes and whatnot, and and uh, even about your radio ministry now. And you have your own radio show as well. So just talk to us a little bit about that. Sure. Um, about deliverance and how important it is to have in your life. I also share my conversion story, my road to Mary, the power of the Eucharist uh, in my life. There's so many topics. So you can go to KendraVonAsh.com. And I will also say at that priest meeting with the 160 priests, they a few of them had pulled me aside and said, thank you so much for your testimony on deliverance. And I know that through the Unbound Ministry, there's ways that dioceses and parishes can implement this at their churches and help their flock, which I think is amazing. Um, yeah, I did just start a, a radio live radio show for Radio Maria with Christine Watkins. She is a former atheist who turned Catholic. Um, through an amazing, miraculous intercession healing through Mary. And so we on the, get on the radio, but we also record it via, via video and we post it on YouTube. So you can kind of see us, you get the behind the scenes action. And the latest episode is going to be me with no makeup on. We're going to talk about vanity and sexuality because both of us fell into a very promiscuous lifestyle. We were seeking the love of God in all the wrong places. So we share that and how we know our identity as a child of God. So tune in on Radio Maria. You can stream it live if you don't have a radio station by you. And then keep an eye out because we post on Queen of Peace Media on YouTube the video so you can share it with others and get the word out for all your fallen away ones that you <laughs> see practicing that behavior. It's a, it's a good uh, topic to bring them back or show them that the love of God is really what we're all seeking not the love of intimacy outside of marriage. Absolutely. Uh, Kendra, it's so uh, such a huge blessing to have you on the show today, and uh, thank you so much for sharing all about uh, deliverance, and, and I hope that uh, this will also uh, you know, move some people to hear from you regularly on, uh, in person or even on your radio show, uh, because uh, you've just got an awesome personality, an awesome uh, way about you, <laughs> and are moving so many people uh, closer to the Holy Spirit. Uh, closer to their relationship with God. So thanks so much for being here and being a regular on my program. You'll certainly be back. So thank you. Oh, thank you so much. You're a blessing too. I'm happy to be here. Anytime, Bill. Anytime. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks so much. And this has been an episode of Young Catholics Respond. Until next time from all of us here at Patchwork Heart Ministry, I'm Bill Snyder. Keep beating to your Catholic heart. You've been listening to Young Catholics Respond, a radio initiative of Patchwork Heart Ministry. To learn more about our ministry and program, visit us at patchworkheart.org. Or to get exclusive access and early ministry updates, become our patron on Patreon by searching for Patchwork Heart Ministry.